Hey folks, it's Viejo here. The video you're about to see here is one that I'm reposting from my previous channel that had been deleted. So if you've seen this video, feel free to bypass it and, and move along to something else. It won't hurt my feelings at all. But I have had some requests to repost some of the uh, videos from that other channel that are not likely to get channel strikes uh, against them. So we're gonna do that. And at the beginning of each of those videos, you'll see this very same uh, prologue. So you'll know. All right, happy shooting, casting, and reloading to everybody. Catch you later. Well, hey guys, it's Viejo here. It is the third week of December in 2021. A little cool here, but a uh, nice, clear, crisp day outside. I got 55 degrees out here in the garage, and it's a little bit warmer than that out, outside, but not by much today. I was recently asked a, a question by a good friend about what does that standard deviation mean that value that's reported by uh, his chronograph okay he sees it every time wasn't too sure what it meant okay so many of us have some sort of a fancy dancy uh chrono there's a, you know a number of different styles i use the magneto speed um but that's you know just me it works real well indoors for most cases so our our chronograph reports to us several values right maximum velocity, minimum velocity, average velocity, extreme spread, the difference between the max and the minimum, um, and something called standard deviation. So that's what we're going to talk about today, standard deviation. i got to preface this with a couple things. First of all, uh, I'm going to present this in as simple format as I can, and some of the values that I'm going to be talking about are not exactly correct for all applications in the field of statistics. Um, but they are going to work well for us in our play field here out on the range. Um, and so mathematicians and statisticians, I don't want to hear it. Okay. So with that caveat out of the way, standard deviation for us is a statistical tool that's calculated for us by our fancy dancy chronograph. Um, and you can look up a formula for it and it's about that long and that big around, okay? You don't want to know the formula. You're glad, you're glad that this little guy's doing it. It's a tool that tells us something about how close our velocities of all our rounds are clustering around an average, okay? If we have velocities from 20 rounds that we fire and they are all over the place, our extreme spread is huge, um, there's something haywire, okay? We don't, we don't like that. We want them to be all pretty close to the same velocity. Well, standard deviation is about that, all right? We can define it as the variation in feet per second round to round from the average velocity. So when we go out to the range and we've got our, you know, fancy dancy chronograph and we got a new new load we're, we're working up, and we come up with an average velocity, um, say 916 feet per second, we say, yeah, that's right where I wanted it. We want to have some idea that the next time we bring that load out, that we're going to get values very close to that number, right? We don't want to have 916 this time and then go out the next time and say, man, all of these are, you know, shooting way low. They must be slower than that, you know, whatever. We want, we're looking for that consistency. Let's look at an example from one of my chronograph pages that I save. Our chronograph might give us some data that looks something like this. And besides all of our values for each of our shots here, I've got 10 that we did in this particular case. Up here we get a maximum and a minimum in feet per second. We get an average. We get an extreme spread, which is simply the difference between the max and the minimum. But we also get this SD, which most of us know stands for standard deviation. But what is that? What, and how can we use that? What uh, value is standard deviation for us as shooters and reloaders? And now let's look at a, kind of a made up sample. I got 20 rounds here of 38 special. And I've got some values here. I'm going to bring you in a little tighter so you can see it better. 
let's look at this sample of 38 special. Okay, we've got 20 rounds here whose minimum velocity was recorded at 908 feet per second. The maximum was 922 with an average of 916 feet per second. And our fancy dancy chronograph told us that the extreme spread was 14, that's just maximum minus minimum, and that the standard deviation was 5.0. All right, so to understand what that 5.0 means, here's another statistical rule in the field of statistics. It's called the 68 95 99.7 rule. And what that means is this, that from any given sample, in this case our 20 rounds, we can expect 68% to fall within one standard deviation. In other words, fall within plus or minus 5 feet per second from that 916 average. We can expect 95% of these 20 to fall within two standard deviations. In other words, plus or minus 10 feet per second off of that 916 value. And 99.7%, in other words, virtually all of these guys, that last 0.3%, you'd have to have a thousand rounds to make that significant. But 99.7%, virtually all of them should fall within three standard deviations. In other words, plus or minus 15 feet per second. So when we take this same load to the range next time, you're not going to have any idea exactly from round to round to round what those velocities are going to be coming out of the muzzle. But this gives us an idea of what we can expect, statistically speaking, based on this sample that we just took. <clears throat> if we take a look at our numbers here, out of those 20, if our standard deviation is 5, then out of these 20 rounds, we would expect 14 of these guys to be somewhere in the range of 911 to 921 feet per second. 95%, in other words, 19 out of those 20, we would expect, statistically speaking, 19 of those, in other words, all but one, to be somewhere in the range of 906 to 926, two standard deviations. And then 99.7%, okay, we would expect to find in that range of 901 to 931 feet per second. Are they really going to be with those numbers? No, this is a statistical analysis of what might happen given a large enough sample. Notice that 901 is below the actual minimum recorded as is that value of 931 above our maximum. Okay, so this is just saying this is what we would expect to happen given a large enough sample based on what the chronograph saw from those 20. Okay, all right, so there's an example. Now let's talk for a minute about what this means to us. Uh, sum this up a little bit. What, what does standard deviation mean? It's a, it's a statistical tool that gives us an idea about how tightly our velocities are from round to round. How, how close are they to our average value? Are they all really similar or are they scattered all over the place? All right. So the smaller our reported standard deviation, the more closely concentrated our velocities are going to be around that average. And the bigger that number is, the more spread out they're going to be. So what does that mean to us at the reloading bench? Um, it's hard to say if we have a real small sample. If you only went out and shot three rounds, this number doesn't mean much at all. It's not real significant. Okay? You might have by accident picked the three out of the hundred that you loaded that were you know, almost identical in velocity. You might have just by accident picked the slowest one and the fastest one. So your sample isn't big enough to really tell much. The bigger our sample the more significant that number is. If our number is small, it's telling us that the things we're doing at the bench are good. Our reloading practices are probably good. In other words, our, our overall lengths are, are right from round to round to round. They're all the same. Our, our measurements of powder are correct. You know, um, 
We probably have made a good powder selection, one that's burning consistently and completely from round to round to round. Okay, what, it, what would it mean if our standard deviation is huge? Again, kind of the opposite of that. It could be poor practices of reloading at, at the press. That doesn't necessarily mean that, though. It could mean that the powder that we're using is not appropriate for this round. It's either burning too quickly or too slowly or incompletely from round to round to round. Okay. Maybe you picked a fast powder and you should have used a slow one or vice versa. So that's, again, it's just, it's just a tool. It gives us something to think about, to go back to the bench and look at, say, how can I bring that, that number down? Well, you might need to change powders. You might need to go back and, and double check your crimps and make sure they're all coming in the same way and, and so forth. So, just, so it's, it's just a tool that gives us an idea of how our practices at the bench are translating to velocities out at the range. It doesn't tell us anything about accuracy. You can have a high standard deviation and a, and a very good accuracy, and you can have a low standard deviation and crummy accuracy. So it's not about accuracy at all. It's about consistency of your velocity, okay? And that's all, okay? So if our, if our standard deviations are too high, gives us something to think about. It at least tells us that we're getting a lot of variation in there and we can go back to the bench and start analyzing our process and our components and see if we can change that for the better. All right, um, that's uh, all I've got for you today. Um, I hope that you found something in there that you can use, but for now, that's all she wrote. <laughs>